Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips and today we're going to talk about why you have an appendix and why you should want to hang on to it. All right, so I'll just start at the beginning of the story here. I think American doctors have become a little overly enthusiastic about removing body parts that they think are unnecessary. A common one would be the gallbladder. If it's bothering you, take it out. Another one, uh, uteruses and postmenopausal women, not going to have any children. Let's just take it out if you're having a problem. But all human body parts have a purpose, and um, unless there's some type of emergency or trauma, patients should really give a lot of careful consideration before they make a decision to have a body part removed. I speak to a lot of people in my office who wish that they had thought through things a little more closely or carefully before they did it. All right, so let's talk about the appendix. Another organ most people think is useless. Medical profession says it's useless. It is a common source of pain and discomfort for a lot of people, but we now know that the appendix actually does have a purpose and that it might be a good idea to hang on to it if you possibly can. So first of all, what is the appendix? It's a thin tube about four inches in length that is situated in the lower right abdomen and connected to the intestine. It serves as a reservoir for bacteria that can be used to repopulate the gut microbiome following any illness. And a good example of that would be cholera. Um, cholera was a regular occurrence in human history and in some parts of the world it still is today. And these kinds of illnesses have an adverse effect on the microbiome. This in turn, we, so um, this, this ability to replenish the bacteria in the microbiome um, helps the person not have a recurrence of a disease and it also protects against future development of disease because the gut microbiome has a very profound role in human immune function. Well, appendicitis is the inflammation of the appendix, and it's one of the most common causes of abdominal pain. If the appendix ruptures, then bacteria can get into the abdomen, triggering peritonitis, an infection of the tissues lining the abdomen and covering abdominal organs. This can be fatal, and so the part of the storyline has always been, well, if we just take it out, then we have 100% certainty that the person is not going, to, um, not going to die. Well, obviously, if the appendix has ruptured, emergency surgery is needed, but the question is, backing up to an inflamed appendix, do we always need to take it out? Well, studies show that most of the time, uh, an inflamed appendix does not rupture, and that antibiotics can be used successfully to treat it. And I'll give you some examples. Researchers in England performed a meta-analysis of four randomized clinical trials that compared antibiotic treatment only with surgery for uncomplicated appendicitis. The use of antibiotics alone was successful 63% of the time in patients who took antibiotics instead of having surgery were 39% less likely uh, to have complications than those who had the surgery. Only 20% of the people who had taken antibiotics only had to later visit a hospital because their system symptoms worsened. The researchers were very clear, again, that this is uncomplicated appendicitis. Complicated appendicitis is when there is a rupture or a perforated appendix or gangrene or something of that nature. So we're talking about uncomplicated appendicitis. Now, another study was conducted right here in Columbus at Nationwide, Children, Nationwide Children's Hospital, and it concluded that most children with uncomplicated appendicitis were able to avoid surgery and that treatment with antibiotics alone was sufficient for resolving the problem. The study included 102 patients who were between the ages of 7 and 17 who were diagnosed with acute but not complicated appendicitis. 65 patients had surgery and 37 chose antibiotics instead. The primary endpoint measured was whether or not the patient had undergone an appendectomy at one year. In other words, a year after the episode where those people who just took antibiotics, were they okay? Secondary outcomes included things like the incidence of complicated appendicitis, sick days for the child and for the parents, and healthcare costs for the year following the event. Now, it was very successful. For children who were treated with drugs, the success rate was 94.6% at hospital discharge, 89.2% at one year, and 75.7% .7 at 21 months. The non-operative group had um, a little bit longer hospitalization than the surgery group, and, um, and a couple of patients were readmitted who had laparoscopic and appendectomy, but the vast majority of these patients did okay. 
Um, there was no significant difference between the group, uh, the two groups, in terms of um, uh, complicated appendicitis at a year. And uh, there was a significant difference in disability days. The non-operative patients averaged eight days. The patients who had surgery averaged 21. And of course, this affects the parents. We're talking about children here. So a child that's home in bed, usually a parent or somebody has to be there with the child. As expected, big difference in cost, about 20% less. And at one year, um, costs remained lower in the drugs only versus the surgical group. Okay, so we have a couple of studies showing that one a meta-analysis and this one done here with um, children showing that it's quite possible to treat children and adults with antibiotics only and no surgery required. So why is this important? How important is it for you to keep your appendix? Well, there's not a whole lot of research on this because the party in line for so many years has been the appendix is useless, but a 2011 study provides some clues. Researchers looked at the medical records for hospital adults, hospitalized adults who develop C. diff infection to determine if whether or not having an appendix made a difference in their health outcomes. C. diff is sometimes fatal uh, as a pathogen, and it's particularly deadly for hospitalized patients. That's usually where people get a C. diff infection, and it's usually patients who have been treated with antibiotics. Well, the study included 254 patients, and the researchers reported that those patients without an appendix were four times more likely to have a recurrence of C. diff than those patients who still had their appendix. Recurrence in the individuals with an appendix, 11.11% of patients, uh, it was 48%, exactly four times higher in the group who had had their appendix taken out. So what this new information, actually some of it isn't so new, it's been around for a while, but um, these new studies should result in more careful consideration about how to treat appendicitis. Um, removing the appendix is considered the standard of care, but research shows that pa patients have excellent outcomes uh, in the case of uncomplicated appendicitis if they just take drugs. Um, costs are lower, but the most important reason for keeping your appendix is because you have an advantage because of the protection the appendix gives you um, to resupply bacteria to your uh, gut microbiome after an illness. So patients and their families should be told that there is no advantage to having the appendix taken out. You do not end up better off. In fact, you could possibly end up worse off if you choose that option. So um, I give the same kinds of cautions to people about having uh, other body parts taken out. There's no question that there are some times when it is absolutely the right thing to do, but um, in many instances, not so much, and that should be discussed with patients um, in the absence of trauma and emergency before they make a decision. All right, that's all for today and for the week. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and we will be back to you next week with more news.